What is up guys, Sink here. Yes, we're back on Star Trek Fleet Command. I will say, I am suffering with a cold, so if I do sound a bit bunged up, I do apologise. This video is actually based around alliances, so this is aimed towards the newer players of the game, but also maybe some of the existing players, because I've actually been out doing missions and mining, and I've seen players that are level 15 and 16 who are just not in alliances for some strange reason. So, players that are new to the game may think, I don't want to be in Alliance, I just want to play on my own and not have to worry. Well, honestly, that is really a big mistake, because depending on the, on the actual level of your Alliance, they can actually provide you with assistance. Now, if you're doing a build upgrade, research, or you're even just repairing the ship, for each member of the Alliance that actually assists, will actually reduce the build time, repair time, or research time by 1 minute or 1%, whichever is the greater. So if you're doing a build and upgrade that can take a day to do. Now in my alliance we're actually leveled up so 13 people can actually help me and all of these people, uh, all 13 slots have been filled. So that's reduced my build time or research time by 13%. It's reduced it down by 13%. Now in the long run this helps so much to level yourself up. So it's not all just about reducing research or build times. There are events that go on in the game, whether it be weekly or monthly. Now there is a monthly event that's going on right now with your alliance. So at the moment, the monthly alliance event is actually this one, which is Assault of the Glory. Now for more hostiles that you attack throughout the galaxy, the more points you get, in which you get given alliance gold trophies, which help go towards the points here. So at the end of the event, depending on your alliance placement, depends on what prize that you, as well as your entire alliance, receives. Now, the prizes are different each time, and obviously being rank 1 gives the best rewards. So for this actual event, you get given recruit tokens for a rare bones and uncommon Sulu and Scotty, as well as alliance credits. Now, you can be given rewards such as Latinum as well. Now, for the alliance credits, these are used for this. So as you go into your Alliance tab and go to Stores tab, you can actually use your Alliance credits to buy different things, whether it's 50 Ultra Recruit Tokens or whether it's just Peace Shields. And as you can see, a 4-hour Peace Shield is only 20 Alliance credits, which is actually pretty damn cheap. So you can buy different amounts of Peace Shields, depending on how often you're getting attacked. These could be possibly the best way you are spending your Alliance credits. Now when joining a game, most new players always look for the most powerful alliance and try to join them. Now this isn't always the case because some of the most powerful alliances on the servers tend to only let powerful players in. Now if you did manage to get a spot in one of the dominant alliances on the server, you may think that this is a great thing, that you're protected by them. This isn't always the case because people are dominant on the servers because they attack other alliances to steal their resources so they can't level as fast. Now what most people do is they can't retaliate against these dominant alliances because they just don't have the strength. So what they'll do is to get revenge they'll seek out the weakest link and if you're the lowest power member in the alliance well guess what you're going to be the butt of the retaliation every single time. So yeah, don't think being in the most powerful alliance when joined in the game is the best thing, because it's not. Now the other type of alliance on the server is the social one. Now I'm in the social alliance and we're not exactly far down the leaderboard for power. I think we're placed about 15th or 16th in power on the server that I'm currently on. So that's not a bad thing. And I love being in a social alliance. Everybody helps each other out constantly. We get to have a bit of a laugh and a joke in the chat. So that's great. So unless you are willing to spend thousands of dollars, and I do literally mean thousands of dollars to progress fast and get into the top end alliances, I would honestly suggest seeking a social alliance. Now, before you actually pick an alliance to join, best thing to do is look at the language they're using because if it's not your language, it's not going to be very social for you. I joined one alliance when I first started a game, ended up being an Italian alliance, didn't know what the hell was going on, and ended getting kicked. But now I've found an alliance which is based in my country, and a lot of the players actually live local to me, so that's great. I get to have a, a laugh with them, have a bit of banter, which is cool. So yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I answered some questions. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comment sections. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Otherwise, I shall catch you guys next time.